chair of the ZSR Library Lecture Series. I'd like to welcome you all to today's event. Our guest speaker is Wake Forest music professor and lyric tenor Richard Hurd. Professor Hurd is a graduate of Southern Methodist University and the University of California at Santa Barbara. He made his operatic debut at the Aspen Music Festival and has since won praise for his characterizations of leading tenor roles in Italian bel canto opera and in all of the major Mozart repertoire. In 2009, he won the silver medal in the American Traditions Voice Competition, a regional finalist of the Metropolitan Opera Auditions. He has received prestigious awards and grants from the National Society of Arts and Letters, Rotary International, the Fuchs Opera Awards, and Mu Phi Epsilon. As a concert singer, Mr. Hurd has been engaged by orchestras across the western, midwestern, and southern regions of the United States, specializing in the works of Bach, Handel, Haydn, and Mozart. In December 1994, he made his European debut, performing concerts in Merzig, Emden, and Berlin. He is a member of Mu Phi Epsilon and serves as director of American Singers Opera Project, a two-week summer opera workshop held at Wake Forest University. He also serves as one of the directors of Wake Forest Annual Christopher Giles and Lucille S. Harris Competition in Musical Performance. In fall 2013, Professor Hurd received a Reynolds leave to research the vocal works of African-American composer Florence Beatrice Price. Additionally, he has been editing Ms. Price's unpublished works and will submit them for publication in spring 2014. His lecture today will focus on his research of the songs that will be included in the collection and he will also present a live performance of Price's works featured on the CD that he recorded in 2012. And those, those CDs are available for sale after today's performance. So without further ado, I'd like to present Professor Richard Hurd. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I don't believe I've done all that, but I guess I have. <laughs> it's on paper. Um, but uh, I'm delighted to be here today to share with you uh, a subject that I'm very passionate about, and that's uh, African American art songs and spirituals. And as she said, in the fall of 2013, I received a Reynolds leave uh, to research the vocal works of Florence Price, who was an African American composer. And my research has involved the recording of a CD of her songs, and I've undertaken a much more, uh, a much larger project and that is editing the unpublished vocal works. And I'm pleased to say that they will be available uh, before the end of the fall semester. And these are being published by Clarinan Publishers in Fayetteville, Arkansas, the, the state where Florence Price was born. So one year after I received the Reynolds leave, uh, I'm delighted that, that we'll actually see this unpublished music in print. Uh, but before I begin my, my presentation, I wanted to share with you uh, five-minute interview that I gave with the producer of this CD, which is titled My Dream, and I would just, it'll give you a little bit more insight about Florence Price, and this is an unedited uh, video, so there are a couple of blurbs. So we'll watch this, and I'll come back in four minutes. <clears throat> I'm on the faculty at Wake Forest University where I am associate professor of music. I've been teaching there. Place in the sun. Richard Hurd, lyric tenor. I'm on the faculty at Wake Forest University where I am associate professor of music. I've been teaching there since 1996. How, how long have you been singing? 
I started singing as a, as a child in, in choirs and in church, so it's kind of hard to remember the exact number of years, but many. Approximately what age did you start singing? Thirteen. Thirteen, okay. And what is your inspiration for this album? I think my inspiration is, is all the beautiful songs that are kind of undocumented and not recorded of, of this particular composer. Uh, it's been my inspiration to record a, a CD of Florence Price songs for many, many years. And so now the reality is no longer a dream, which incidentally is going to be the title of the CD. And so tell us a little bit about Florence Price. What, what do you know, what may we not know about her? Well, Florence Price was born in Arkansas uh, and later in life moved to the city of Chicago. And she's really well remembered for having her first symphony, which was in E major, performed by the Chicago Symphony in 1933. And, you know, she's written over 300 songs and, and chamber works and uh, orchestral works. Uh, but chiefly, she's remembered for this one major piece, which is a symphony that she composed, and an assortment of uh, spirituals, particularly uh, My Soul's Been Anchored in the Lord, which was sung uh, many times by Marian Anderson, Lindine Price, and all the singers of that period. So, <clears throat> with uh, Florence Price uh, being the com primary composer of this album, um, what is your love for her? Or, or why did you select her out of all of the, the composers that you could have selected? I selected her songs because of the beautiful melodies that she composed and arranged, and also the, the wonderful poetry that, that's used in her works. And those are my two chief reasons for selecting her music. And I did a lot of research in Arkansas and found that she was such an humble person, very warm. So I thought, what better way to show tribute to this wonderful composer than to record her songs. What are some of the other places that you have sung before, uh, especially places that you just deem your favorites? Well, I've made several trips to Germany uh, performing spirituals. Uh, I've sung at, I think, at least 50 universities in, in this country. Uh, but I don't have really any memorable ones because they all have been very, very special to me, especially after a concert and someone comes up and says that I really didn't move them with my performance of this song you know, or that song. And I get a lot of gratification out of that, pleasing the audience. Is this your first CD? This is my second CD. The first one was titled Ain't of That Good News. And so now we'll have a dream about 12 years later. And what genre? Um is the first CD. It's all African American art songs and spirituals, as well as this CD. I feel it's music that the world needs to hear, and many of our African American artists are not always publicized, particularly uh, African American women composers. So it was just another, again, a dream of mine to uh, showcase some of their works. And Florence Price is one of the, the biggies in that genre. Who is uh, producing uh, your album, especially the first one and the second one? I have this wonderful producer by the name of Valerie Johnson, who is on the faculty at Bennett College. Such a wonderful producer, and by the way, she's also an excellent singer. On this uh, CD, My Dream, I, I'm being collaborated, well, no, it's not, I'm being collaborated. Uh, my accompanist is Dr. Roy Belfield, who was formerly on the faculty at Winston-Salem State University, but is now teaching at the University of Maryland, Eastern Shore. Where are, you where are you recording your CD? This will be recorded at Sound of Art Studios, which is uh, co-owned by Valerie Johnson and Rasheen Pugh. Where is that located? In Greensboro. When we're sitting down listening to this uh, across the country as people sit down to listen to it, what do you want them to take away from the, the album? I want them to leave with a message and also, I think, being moved by the lyrics being moved by the beautiful melodies that they're going to hear in the vocal line and also in the wonderful accompaniment. Out of the south there was soft sweet wind oh, and on its breath was a song of fields and flowers and leafy bowers and bees that hum all day long. Out from the south, the soft little wind blew. On 
So that just gives you just a little uh, introduction to Florence Price and how I came about to, to record the CD. Uh, I'm going to sort of plow through my short lecture and also share some of this beautiful music with you along the way. I want to thank in advance my colleague, Dr. Joanne Inkman, for accompanying me today. Um, you might be interested in knowing how I came to be associated with, with Florence Price and African American songs in general. Uh, several years ago, um, I created a, a course in the Department of Music, and it was titled African American Art Songs and Spirituals. And I was happy to introduce this course to, to my students because it was an area that had not, to my knowledge, been explored before. But what I found was a difficulty in gathering enough information to teach 33 lectures you know, for the class. And I soon realized that there just wasn't a lot of information out there, particularly as it related to African American po composers, and especially finding you know, vocal music scores that, that were available. So I began to contact people that I knew, friends and colleagues, singers and conductors, asking for their help. And you know, I got all this information. I got all these uh, uh, scores and lots of materials. And I then had to focus my attention on specific composers. And so I thought it might be interesting just to focus maybe on a, a certain area of composers, particularly women composers. And since they had not received a lot of exposure during this time, and it was very rewarding to teach this class because uh, it was just wonderful music to share with, with the students. And uh, a lot of these songs were not, and some of them are still not published. And so I decided you know, to make it a long-term project uh, to not only record some of the music, but also to uh, try and find a way to get it published so that I could make it available to other singers and also voice teachers so that they, they all would have access. And so now my big project now, and now that I've recorded the CD, is now to, to get it, the music published. And Clarinan Publishers, as I said, uh, in Arkansas is going to be handling that for me. And just last week, I, I shared some information on Facebook with the African American Art Song website. And I got over 100 responses saying, you know, when is the music going to be available? And the biggest question was, is it going to be available in high and low key? But uh, those of us who are voice teachers and singers, we have to have access to high and low because we teach all voice types. And so fortunately, it will be available in low and, and high. But over, over the past few years, I, I presented a lot of recitals at universities. And um, I featured a lot of music by African American composers. And along the way, I became very impressed by one composer in, in particular, and that was Florence Price, uh, the topic of my lecture. She was born in Little Rock, Arkansas in the month of April, on April the 9th, in 1887. And she was a very smart child. At the age of four, she played in her first recital. And she studied with her mother, who was a very uh, well-known voice te piano teacher in uh, Little Rock. And her mother's name was Florence, so she named her daughter Florence. And uh, her father was, was, was one of the few black dentists in uh, Little Rock during this time. At the age of 11, she uh, published her first work. So she could be called, I guess, a child prodigy. And by the age of 16, she was receiving commissions to, to write compositions for you know, special occasions. At the age of 14, she graduated from high school. She was her high school valedictorian. And in 1906, when she was just 19, she graduated from the New England Conservatory of Music with a bachelor's degree in organ performance and music education. And she studied with George Chadwick and those of us who are musicians know that name, a, a very early pioneer in American music. Um, she's very well known for the kind of mixture of styles in her music with the traditional classical style and also that uh, African-American idiom, particularly uh, music that's related to the black church. She got a lot of her inspiration in her spirituals by being involved in the black churches. And um, her music has also been described as you know, very romantic. Uh, 1906 to 1912, she taught at the university, at Clark University in Atlanta. And she then married an attorney uh, by the name of Thomas Price. And they moved to Chicago in 1927 due to a lot of racial unrest in Little Rock. She had three children, uh, two girls and a son. One of the girls, her name is Florence. <laughs> so a <laughs> generation of Florences. Um, and she had a son who unfortunately died in infancy. 
And her first, one of her first pieces that she wrote was To My Little Son, based on poetry by Julia Johnson Davis. I haven't been able to locate a lot of information on the poets, um, but this poem in particular s speaks about uh, a mother who's probably looking into the face of her baby, very small child, still an infant, and she's imagining what that child will grow up to be, particularly by the age of 21. So the first song I'm going to perform is To My Little Son. In your face I sometimes see Shadowings of the man to be And eager To dream Of what my son shall be My son will be Thank you. One little bit of information I forgot to share with you. Um, this is my fourth week uh, recovering from major surgery, so I was a little uh, 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 not afraid, but a little nervous about how it would feel. So I'm letting you know that, that my voice that I'm singing today is not my usual diaphragmatic support. <laughs> so uh, uh, this was an art song, which is a composition for voice and piano based on a poem. So in 1930, Florence Price uh, unfortunately divorced her husband. And in 1932, it's mainly her claim to fame, she won a major competition uh, which resulted in her symphony number one being performed by the Chicago Symphony. Uh, and this was a major milestone stone in her career. And she was a very busy composer you know, during this time, and she was only able to finish this symphony due to the fact that she broke her foot and had to take a lot of time off. And there's a famous quote that, that people share uh, that was given in her lifetime. It gives an idea of, of the kind of person she was. And she wrote, um, I found it possible to snatch a few precious days in the month of January in which to write undisturbed. And she says, but oh dear me, when shall I ever be so fortunate again as to break a foot? <laughs> so <laughs> as musicians, we're busy, we're, we're so busy. But at the end of her, at the end of her marriage, uh, she moved in with one of her students by the name of Margaret Bonds. And we've heard that name, a very, uh, another celebrated African-American composer. And to support herself, Florence uh, became not only a composer, but a music teacher, orchestrator. She wrote music for, for films and commercials. And she also was a very fine organist. And during this time, she um, traveled in very nice social circles. She uh, met a lot of really well-known poets during this time, particularly Langston Hughes, uh, which a lot of us know that name. Um, she used his poetry in probably 10 of, of her songs. She also set the poetry of Paul Lawrence Dunbar. And I'm not sure she ever met Paul Lawrence Dunbar. He died in 1906, and she graduated from college in 1906. But knowing Florence Price and, and how uh, knowledgeable she was, I have a feeling that she may have crossed his path at some point. But I do know that she had a chance to meet uh, with Langston Hughes. Uh, she's written so many beautiful art songs and spirituals, 300 to be exact, but again, many of them are unpublished and a lot of them you know, have been lost. And so I've made it you know, just a, a mission of mine to, to share all this uh, uh, unpublished music with the, with the public. 
The next selection that we're going to perform for you is another art song uh, for voice and piano. Uh, and the poet is Odessa P. Elder, another unknown poet. Perhaps someone might know her. If you do, please let me know. I haven't found anything yet. But the text uh, speaks about the poet uh, perhaps being drawn to a place that inspires him or her to write about it. So this is Sunset. This is an unpublished song. And she composed over 400 works, and many of them unpublished, and many of them, unfortunately, are lost. And she died of a stroke in Chicago, June of 1953. And about 11 years later, in 1964, there was a Chicago elementary school that was named in her honor, in recognition of her legacy as, as both a Chicago musician and important uh, African American composer. And many of Florence Price's songs uh, include her arrangements. Of, of spirituals, uh, which clearly display the character of the black culture and also music. And at the beginning of, of the lecture, I mentioned that her professor at New England Conservatory was George Chadwick. And uh, she had a really great influence on him because in a lot of his music, later uh, you would hear some of the um, African American musical styles in which you also heard in the music of Florence Price. And so she really allowed uh, her culture in which she was raised to impact her music. She was deeply religious, and uh, frequently she used the music of the black church as material for, for arrangements. And one of uh, the spirituals that, that I think I really, really love is her arrangement of Go Down Moses, uh, which is uh, based on the, the Bible and the chapter of Exodus. And the, the text speaks about the Lord speaking unto Moses, go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go, that they may serve me, in which God commands Moses to demand the release of the Israelites from bondage in Egypt. This is Go Down, Moses. Tell all Pharaoh 
rest so hard they could not stand. Let my people go. Thus spoke the Lord, for Moses said, Let my people go. like a real performance now. <laughs> <So> <laughs> um, in the last two or three years, you know, there has been a renewed interest in the music of Florence Price. This is all also wonderful. Sometimes a composer's music will, will lie asleep for many, many years, and, all, and, and then at some point, there is uh, everyone's performing their music. So uh, I discovered this last year. Everyone was beginning to perform music by, by Florence Price for some strange reason. Uh, but just last year, there was a, a very special broadcast on a radio station in New York on WQXR, and it was a documentary on the life of Florence Price, and it was titled The Price of Admission. <laughs> and the producer of, of this uh, uh, documentary was Terrence McKnight, and I had an opportunity to meet him last year. I gave a, a lecture recital at, at Chapel Hill, and it was focusing on, it was a symposium on the music of Margaret Bonds, again, who studied with, with Florence Price, and uh, he was there, and it was just wonderful to be able to, to speak with him ab about what he knew about Florence Price, and if he could share some information maybe that I have not discovered. Um, but we were pretty much about the same in what we both knew about her. Um, but um, as I have mentioned, she again was a very religious person, and she used her faith again as inspiration in her arrangement of, of the spirituals. and. Um, she arranged so many beautiful spirituals, and as I was going through looking for which ones we might uh, publish, uh, two of them came to mind. And another one, uh, again, it's, it's Weary Traveler. This, again, is, is an unpublished uh, spiritual. I found it just in a folder and stacks of stuff at the University of Arkansas when I went there last year. And it was just tucked away very neatly uh, in pencil. Uh, and the other one was My Little Soul's Going to Shine. And these are probably two of, of, of my favorites. So we'll perform Weary Traveler, followed by My Little Soul's Going to Shine. Let us cheer the weary traveler. Let us cheer the weary traveler along the heavenly way. Oh, let us cheer the weary traveler, cheer the weary traveler. Let us cheer the weary traveler along the heavenly way. Take my gospel trumpet and I'll begin to blow. And if my Savior has 
let us cheer the weary traveler along the heavenly way. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to join that big cessation. I'm going to join that big cessation. I'm going to join that big cessation. Then my little soul's going to shine, shine. Then my little soul's going to shine along. I'm going to climb up Jacob's ladder. I'm going to climb up Jacob's ladder. I'm going to climb up Jacob's ladder. Then my little soul's going to shine, shine. Then my little soul's going to shine along. I'm going to feast off to feast of milk and honey. I'm going to feast of milk and honey. Then my little soul's going to shine, shine. Then my little soul's going to shine alone. I'm going to walk and talk with the angels. I'm going to walk and talk with the angels. I'm going to walk and talk with the angels. Then my little soul's going to shine, shine. Then my little soul's going to shine alone. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as I opened up the, the presentation, I mentioned that all of Florence Price's materials are held in the special collections a department of the University of Fayetteville in Arkansas. And it was presented by her daughter, Florence Price Robinson. So Florence's mother was named Florence. Florence's name was Florence, and she named her daughter Florence. So we had three generations of Florences. But in 1974, she donated all of her mother's uh, papers, all of the music, published and unpublished, and, and there were many correspondences and letters that she had written to very famous people during this time. There's a several letters from Harry T. Burley, who is a famous uh, arranger and composer, and a lot of letters from Marian Anderson, who is a very famous uh, contralto. And um, I later found that Marian Anderson sang a lot of Florence Price's arrangements, the spirituals. So I had an opportunity to visit the collection in Arkansas and when I started the CD project. And you know, at that point, I had discovered <coughs> if there were any other songs out there. And I often wondered, are there more than the three or four songs by Florence Price that I already have? And um, what I discovered in Arkansas was, was uh, some lovely jewels. And uh, a lot of scores just written in pencil and tucked away in a folder. And you know, you sometimes you, say you feel like a child in a candy store, very excited. So I was very excited uh, to uncover all this music. and. Uh, I often wondered why no one else had undertook you know, such a project as this, trying to get this music published. Uh, again, a lot of people didn't even know that it was there. Uh, so they gave me permission to make as many copies as I wanted. And so I then decided to record several of them on the CD. And then I started digging a little bit deeper and I discovered that at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, there was a collection called the Marian Anderson Collection. And before then, I just thought it was all about Marian, Marian Anderson, but I, I soon found out that it wasn't. Um, but the association with Marian Anderson is that uh, she performed uh, Florence Price's spiritual My Soul's Been Anchored in the Lord in a very historic moment in our history at the Lincoln Memorial in 1939. Again, it was in the month of April, the year, the month of Florence's birth. Um, so I decided to go there to visit you know, the collection. Again, I found so many wonderful songs, unpublished, 
and I made copies of about you know 35 of these songs and many of them I'm predicting that they'll be well received once they're actually published and just last week I received an email from a professor at the University of Arkansas inviting me to present a lecture uh, next year on Florence Price and also to give a recital and he just happens to also be doing a documentary of her life and he would like uh, to interview me uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be during the month of April, but it seems like there's this connection, things happening in the month of April as they relate to Florence Price. And, you know, as if it couldn't get any more exciting than this, in that same email this professor sent me, he indicated that someone has just discovered several boxes of music in Florence Price's house in Chicago, in the attic, when they were getting ready to sell it. And they didn't know what to do with all of this, so they, again, sent it to the Special Collections Department in Arkansas. So this will mean another visit to look at more music uh, in Arkansas. And when I published, uh, when I finally published this anthology, it'll be the very first collection of, of songs by Florence Price. I mean, there are maybe two or three songs that are in a collection, but this will be a collection of her art songs and spirituals, and it will be titled the Florence Price Collection of Art Songs and Spirituals. So far, we've, we've indicated that there are gonna be, be about 50 songs in the anthology, and I, I'm excited about making these works available because uh, the public really needs to, to know this music. It's so beautiful, but if it's not published, it's really hard to, to get it out there. And um, I'm gonna close this presentation with, with four very short songs. They're called encore songs. And if you don't listen very closely, you might miss them because they're all of 45 seconds. Uh, and Florence Price uh, uh, set other poets beside African-American poets. She uh, also set music by Thomas Moore and Ogden Nash. And these are four encore songs that one could sing at the end of a hopefully successful recital. Uh, the first one's called Tobacco. The second one's called A Flea and a Fly. And the second one's called Come, Come, said Tom's father. And the last one is called Song of the Open Road. Tobacco is a dirty weed. I like it. It satisfies no normal need. I like it. It makes you thin. It makes you lean. It takes the hair right off your bean. It's the worst stuff I've ever seen. I'm always happy when the audience laughs. <laughs> a flea and a fly in a flu were in prison, so what could they do? Said the fly, let us flee. Said the fly, let us flee. Said the flea, let us fly. So they flew through a flaw in the flu. Come, come, said Tom's father, at your time of life. There's no longer excuse for thus playing the rake. It is time you should think, boy, of taking a wife. Why, so it is, father, whose wife shall I take? that I shall never see a billboard lovely as a tree. Indeed, unless the billboards fall, I'll never see a tree at all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, my CD, fortunately, has received a nice review in the, the Journal of Singing, which is uh, the official journal 
of the National Association of Teachers of Singing. And this journal is read by about every single voice teacher in the country at who teaches privately and also who teaches at universities and subscribed to by, by thousands of singers. And so I was just a little nervous when I submitted this for evaluation uh, or review. I just didn't know what he was going to say and then all of my colleagues would be reading it. Uh, but I'm happy to, to say that he, he, li he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so he liked it very much. And he felt that, that my affection for these songs was clearly evident in the heartfelt performances. So I really appreciate the fact that he gave me uh, uh, four stars. Um, and, and finally, next, next year, probably in the month of April, <laughs> uh, my colleague Peter Kairoff and I will be pre presenting a recital of the unknown works of Florence Price. And um, I want to thank again my colleague Joanne Inkman for accompanying me today. <laughs> and I want to thank you for, for the opportunity to share my research with you. And I hope that you've enjoyed the presentation. And if you have any questions uh, that I might be able to answer, I'll certainly try to do that.